This is lecture 17 of Data Communications and Network Ones. We will continue chapter 8 of Wide Array Network with the Asynchronous Transfer Mode Network. Asynchronous Transfer Mode, uh, I select this network in, uh, in order to um, talk about as an example of the quality of service. Okay as the idea of the quality of service in the network. Okay. Asynchronous transfer mode is um, a protocol, okay, or a, um, a kind of a network technology, okay, that uh, they want, okay, to be a universal network technology that support all type of networks, including the circuit switching and IP-based network. Um, even though it's not, it's not really the case, okay, that is uh, everyone is using the ATM. Um, however, it's still good to know these technologies. And as I say that, it's intended for, since it's want to be universal um, technology, okay, so it's have to accommodate all type of data with many di different um, quality of service or QoS. And I will use this as an example to explaining the virtual circuit network and also the quality of service. Uh, ATM use the fact that the, uh, the modern communication systems, okay, are better than in the past, okay, it's more reliable. Um, and the link, if it's fiber optics, okay, very small, very, um, very, very low probability of error for transmitting, okay, so you can use that to reduce the overhead compared to the uh, X25 or the frame relay, which is the older, um, older the network, uh, network technology, okay? X25, this is the old network, um, and, and also frame relay. This is the older network um, technology, okay? So ATM is faster. And this you can uh, look it up, okay? The frame relay and the A25 if you want. Now let's look at the characteristic of ATM. ATM use a very fixed, a uh, very small, fixed size frame, okay? We call this a sale because it's very small. There's only 53 bytes per sale, okay? So you know the length, okay? It's a fixed length. You know that the length has to be 55 bit bytes per sale. So you have less processing time at the node. So the node can count, okay? It is um, from the from the first byte. If it's um, fifty three byte already, so this is the end of the of the sale. You have minimum flow and error control. Okay, you have uh, you don't have any um, hop by hop error correction and uh, error detection and the retransmission as done in the X twenty five. X twenty five has a hop by hop error control, but in frame in ATM, okay, this is cut out. Okay. So you don't have um, you don't have to do this. Um, so it's make it faster, but it still leave uh, one thing that is the header error detection. Okay, so we detect uh, detect error or error detection on the header. If the header is wrong, uh, it will it will um, throw it away, throw the pack the sale away because it check the header because it think that if the header is wrong. The sale is wrong anyway. It may send to the wrong destination, and if you don't discard it, it will um, clock the network. Okay, it make the it make like it's not it's a useless uh, sale, but it's kind of stay in the network and make the network more congested. So it will check only the header. If the header is wrong, it will throw away that sale. Okay, to reduce the load of the network. Okay. Um, and the ATM use the virtual circuit approach, okay? So you have setup connection, data transfer, and end connection. And at the node inside of the network, you have table, okay? Switching table inside of the node. And the processing time at the node is small, okay? Because you just look at the table. Um, the ATM protocol reference model is, you have the physical layer at the lowest layer of kind of the OSI model. And then you have ATM layer and the second layer. And then you have ATM adaptation layers or AAL. ATM adaptation layer is the layer that will that will um, convert, okay, 
the data from the um, other network, okay, to, uh, sorry, like the many, many uh, different type of data, okay, and uh, many different format, okay, into ATM sales. Let's look at the characteristic in more detail, okay? The fixed size frame is very short, 53 bytes. Even though the longer cell size will be more efficient, like, you know, the data with the header, this size is used because the traffic is mostly not voice, okay, in the past, uh, okay? Originally in the past, the traffic is most, was mostly noise, voice, and voice can accept only a small and relatively fixed delay. So if you have um, 53 byte, uh, you have five byte header, and you have 48 bytes, which are the data. So if you have uh, 48 voice samples, okay, the delay is acceptable. But if you have long, really long packet, the delay for the voice will not be acceptable. <coughs> and this is uh, about six um, milliseconds delay for the 48 PCM voice samples in one cell. And there are some, okay, even though it's not very efficient to use fixed size fail, uh, small, short, you know, uh, just sales, okay? Uh, the, but they still have advantages, is that it have less queuing delay for high priority sales. So if you have queue, okay, uh, many sales in the queue, and then some priority sales coming in, you can kind of skip over to the, to the front, okay? So if you have, it, it, this is the node, right? And you have um, sale, okay, coming in. And this is high priority. Okay, when it's come, okay, if this is sending the data out. Okay, when, when this one finish sending the data, it's sent out over here, sorry. This one is sent out already. This one can jump okay, and be transmitted next, okay. So for high priority cell, you have a small delay. So you can do this for like, if it's voice traffic, telephone traffic, okay, you can have, it have to have high priority cell, high priority because it, it can uh, accept small delay, okay. But if, if this is data, if this is email, okay, you can have um, longer, okay. It's a normal cell, you can have longer delay. But if the cell is long, in other case, the cell is very long. And you have high priority cell coming here, okay? And this one is already getting to here, okay? So it's very long. So you have to wait until it transmit, finish transmitting up to here, okay? Finish transmitting this cell or this uh, frame before this one can be transmitted. If, if this is transmitting, you cannot cut in, okay? You have to wait until it's finished to, to, to transmit yours, okay? But if it's short, when it have a short time to, to transmit one sale, so you can get a um, faster uh, service. And the sale can be switched more efficiently, okay? Uh, because it's fixed size. Uh, there is a minimum flow and error control, okay, because they have only five bytes per header. Let's look at the ATM cell format, okay. You have, uh, for the user network, this is the user network interface, okay. You have information field, which is um, 58 octets or 58 bytes. One, one line is one, uh, is one byte, okay. So number one to number eight here is the bit number. Okay, so you have eight bits for each line, so one byte. So you have a total of uh, 53 octets or 53 bytes, okay? And 48 information field and five header, five byte header. The first, the first one is the virtual path identifier, okay? And the uh, virtual path identifier and the generic flow control, okay? The generic flow control is used only at the user network interface. If you look, if you compare to the second format, okay, the second format is network network interface, okay. For the network network interface, you don't have generic flow control. The 
the full bystand and full control. You have only at user network interface, but you don't have at network network inside in network network interface, which means that in uh, intermediate node inside of the network, you don't have generic flow control. Okay, but the other are the same. Okay, the other um, fields they are the same, except that the generic flow control will become part of the virtual part identifier for the inside of the network. Now next is the, so the flow control is done at the end. So if you have a user that want to transmit, so if this is the last node, okay, and you have a user here, and you want to, you can have flow control here, okay, because uh, the user may transmit, and it, this is user, okay, so because the user may, may be able to accept at a slower rate than the node can transmit. So you can have flow control here. Only at this link, okay? But inside of the network, okay? No flow control inside of the network. And this is a, this is a user network interface. But this is the, Network, network interface. Okay, okay, so it's a little bit different there. Now, what is a virtual part identifier? Okay, sometimes we call it VPI. This is 8 bit or 12 bit, okay? And we have also virtual channel identifier. Okay, this is uh, 16 bits. Uh, this virtual part identifier and virtual channel identifier, they are used for routing purpose. This is kind of a logic channel number that we talked about in the general format of the, um, of the virtual circuit network, okay? And then you have a payload type. The payload type indicate, this is three, there are three bits for the payload type. This indicate the data type, okay? Whether it's user data or the management data. And it also indicate whether the congestion has been experienced, okay, whether um, you found that in the network there is uh, a congestion occur. CLP is still lost priority, this is only one bit, okay, on the fourth byte of the header. The cell loss priority is uh, to differentiate between the high priority traffic. High priority traffic has a CLP equal to zero, and the low priority traffic has a CLP bit equal to one. If, con if there is a congestion inside of the network, okay, the low priority sale will be thrown away, okay, to reduce the load of the network. Then you have a header error control to check the header. Okay, we'll talk about this in a little bit. You see that um, they are very similar. The, on the left hand side is a, uh, they have the general flow control, it's a network, uh, user network interface, and the with no general flow control is a network network interface. We have talked about the header format and the VPI, okay, and the payload type already. Also, the cell loss priority. Now, the header error control, or HEC, okay? This is, seems like um, similar to the frame check sequence uh, in the data link layer that we have talked about. It used the generator um, polynomial Px equal to x to the a plus x squared plus x plus 1. This is the standard. Okay, so it's just eight bits um, priority checks. And they check only the header part, okay? They don't check the data part, so they check only the header part. And you have an error detection and single error correction. So if there is only one single error in the header, it can correct, and it will not throw away the cell. But if it's more than one single error, it cannot correct, and it will disregard the, the cell, okay? Because they think that it may come to the difference um, the wrong destination anyway. Um, I told you that the ATM used virtual circuit approach, okay? So you have a logic connection, okay, in, in ATM. We call this virtual channel connections, or VCC, which is just like a virtual circuit. However, um, there are two layers of virtual circuit, um, of the virtual channel, okay, in the, in the ATM, okay? So instead of one, one layer of the virtual circuit connection, there's two layers. 
So anyway, the virtual circuit connection is this one layer, okay? This is set up between two end users. Um, so this is similar to the normal virtual circuit, okay? So it provides variable rate because it's sent with a packet, so you can change the rate, okay? And you can have a full duplex um, transmission. You can have, um, you can have, um, you can have full duplex um, transmissions over connections, okay, with a uh, uh, fixed size sales. Uh, this is a misprint here. You can have full duplex flow, uh, flow control, and uh, fixed size sales over connection. Um, in in addition to the VCC, okay, ATM can use the ID, also use the idea of virtual part connections or VPC. This is another layer of the virtual circuit. So VPC is a group of VCC that share the same parts. So if you think about this, if you look at it as um, in the in real life, okay, if you have bus like a bus number that can take a lot of people to go to uh, to their destination, okay. So bus number one, number two, number three, these are the virtual part um, connection VPC, okay. Because it's a group of VCC, and inside, okay, if you have, if you have um, many people, okay, to go from one place to another place, okay, that is VCC. That is uh, for the packet. For example, if you have um, you and your friends, okay, in the same, um, in, in uh, stay close together at, at the same, you know. Uh, or if you have a sibling, okay, go to the same, like Kasetsan University, maybe in your home you have many people go to Kasetsan University, then you set up a connection that um, go from your home and you may take bus, suppose bus number 10, okay, to go to Kasetsan University. Or uh, uh, in the future you may have um, the, the, the train, okay, to come here. Um, the high speed train, something like that, okay, hopefully. Um, and then, so, so you take the bus, so everyone take the same bus, um, so you have one part to go from your home to the, uh, maybe you have two or three packet, okay, two or three people coming to the uh, Gazette University, so that is one VCC. Let me show you this picture. So you have a physical transmission part, okay, like the road or the, uh, fiber optics, or the coaxial cables, or the air, and then you have, uh, okay, you can have two layers of the uh, virtual circuit, okay? So one is a virtual part, and another one is virtual channels. Virtual channels is a group of virtual part. As I say, you can think of this as a bus, and each of the virtual channel is like, uh, like many packets that come from one, des one, one uh, source to one destination. And if you think of as a bus, uh, many people get in, okay, from many places. Maybe the one, the first one come uh, get in the bus at the at the second station. Another one come get in the bus at the fifth station, something like that. And they also so they share their line for a while, okay? They share their route for a while, and then they get off at uh, maybe different stations, okay? So the virtual part is good in that if it's already set up. When you want to, uh, when you want to use that part, okay, it's easy to to get into the the part, okay, to to set up the connection. Think of this if you have a lot of people, okay, if you have a lot of people in uh, uh, in Bangkok, okay, using want to use the bus, so this guy, okay, get in, so the bus come here. Okay, so the bus is coming. This guy get in. This is bus stop. And then another bus stop. Okay, another guy get in. This is another bus stop. This one get in, okay. Another bus stop. Okay, so you have three people in here.
So when you are new, okay, you are new at uh, at some place, okay, and you want to to use like the the bus, okay, it's easy. So that you don't have to. Uh, if you take a taxi, that's virtual, uh, that's datagram, right? But if you use the bus, you share the path together. Then that's um, you share the road together, you share the the bus together. That is the uh, virtual circuit, okay? So then when you go to the destination, maybe this guy get get out first, get out first, arrive first, right? So this guy share the 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 route only for one station. Okay, one station is go down, but this guy may may share for another for another station. It may go down here. So you can see that the blue, the black, and the red guys. Okay, they share the 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 red guy use this part. All of them share uh, for this link. Okay, so so suppose this is this is a node, node one. Node two, node three, node four, node five. Okay, so um, in the line that is going, okay, from node one, so you have this one, this one is using the line, okay, so, so suppose the line is Go like this. Ah, go like this. Okay. So uh, at this node two, you have two of them using the same part. Then, then you go to node three. You get three of them using the same part. Ah, see, three of them using the same path, and then over here is node uh, three getting out. Okay, getting out. So you have only this one and this one left. Okay, and then over here you get only this one left. Node number five. Okay, this go down like this. So you have if you have um. A virtual pass connection already, okay, which is kind of the bus, and then you allow. This is um, blue has a virtual circuit, okay. The blue has a virtual circuit from blue has a virtual circuit from here. Sorry. To here, okay. The black has a virtual circuit from here. To here. This is a virtual circuit of black, okay, which is not the, the same, and the and and the red has a virtual circuit of this. So, okay, you can say that it's in here. This one, suppose that is a node, okay, so it may get get to node six or something, okay. So the virtual circuit of the blue is like this, of the of the black is like this, and of the red is like this. You can see that. Um, but the the virtual path connection is from one to six already. The virtual path connection is come from one to six. This is the virtual path connection. Come from one to six. Virtual path connection. Okay, but the but the virtual circuit connection, this is virtual circuit connection, virtual circuit connection. Different virtual circuit connection can get into the virtual part and can leave the virtual part. So let's look at this. This is the advantage of using a separate VCC and VPC because if you don't do this, you have a lot of, okay, instead of, of having, having one main uh, part, okay, one main VCC. Okay, and then any, anyone can VCC can connect into the VCC, get in and get out. If you have many different parts, then when you have a lot of people, like um, 100,000 people using the bus, okay, that will be, will be very difficult to have to, to do the, the virtual circuit to allow everyone to go to the place that they want to. But if you have bus uh, route, okay, 
just um, not a lot, maybe just um, less than 100 bus routes, okay, you still be able to, uh, to transfer a lot of people in the city. So by using uh, two layers of virtual circuit, okay, the VCC and VPC, you reduce the switching text, okay? So all v VCC in a single VPC can be switched together. So you can, when you have a bus, okay, it, you turn, okay? Okay, bus, this bus, bus number five, come here, and then turn right at this uh, intersection, something like that. So you don't have to, to worry about people in the bus, individual people in the bus, they will always go with the bus. So, and have a higher speed, okay, because less delay. And have a short connection set up time. So when you go to some, a new home, okay, and you have to take a bus, then you just study what bus passed through your home and to your destination, and then you can just get into the bus. You don't have to uh, try to find, okay, the, the individual way to go. So you have short connection um, set up time, okay. So it's easy to add a new virtual circuit connection to already set up VPC, okay? Then sending a call request signal and set up a new individual, individual virtual circuit. And you have higher performance and reliability, okay? And the lower management cost because you manage uh, as a group, right? You have a smaller number of entities. You have smaller number of VPC uh, than the individual VCC. Now, when all VCC in a single VPC are uh, following the same path, they can switch together, okay? But, um, so you have only the, the table to switch um, the virtual path identifier incoming into the outgoing virtual path identifier, which is kind of the logic channel number, but they are the identifier for the, for the whole bus, okay, for the whole path. Um, this, this is the same as what I just showed you here, okay, in the switching table. But if you someone lift the bus as a, at that node, okay, or get in the bus at that node, then you have to switch both the um, VCC and VPC, okay? So you have to switch also, have a table, switching table for both VPI and VCI. So in this case, in the VP, okay, you switch like that. And in the layer of VP, you also have to switch come from, for example, you have to connect the bus. You get out of the bus uh, number one and have to take the bus number five at that uh, bus stop, okay? Then you have to go to another bus. So the, the pipeline, okay, the, the, the group there is kind of like uh, the bus and, and when you change the bus, okay, you go to a different, uh, you have to also connect in the, in the level of the virtual uh, circuit connection identify uh, that have the server circuit identifier. So let's say let's look at this example. This is a switch. Okay, so you have the input um, coming from port number one, which have a VPI virtual part identifier of one fifty three and virtual channel identifier of sixty seven. Then the output port is port number three with the VPI of one forty and VCI of ninety two. You can see that when you have a packet coming incoming, okay, in the packet, in the cell, ATM cell, you will have VPI and VCI. So you read them, VPI 153, VCI 67. You read the table, okay, you have to go out port number three, okay. So you send out at port number three, or the line number three, okay. I will cell, you change the number to VPI 140 and VCI 92. Again, the virtual part identifier or the logic channel number in general, okay. There has no physical meaning. What is used is to tell you that there are, if you have the same number, logic channel number, is the same, like the, the package from the same user, something like that, okay? So you can change, uh, you can change the number. When you get in, okay, maybe the whole bus getting in, okay, and it may come out with a, a new number, a new virtual part identifier that is possible, okay, like this one. VP1, okay, may get in with a virtual part identifier of number 50. It may get out with a virtual part identifier of number 32, okay, that is okay. As you can distinguish between the different VP, VP, um, the virtual part connection, like 
if VP I'm getting in 50, VP2 have to and VP3 have to be in the other number other than 50. And coming out if VP3 is, okay, you switch out, okay. Uh, if it's um, number 32, the VP, uh, VP1 and VP2 coming out has to use other numbers than the 32, have to be different numbers so that you can distinguish between different channels with, the, with different connection. Now let's look at the ATM and protocol architecture, okay. In the physical layer, you can use the cell-based transmission or you can use the SDH-based transmission. The SDH-based transmission is based on the fiber optics uh, protocol, okay, architecture. Um, uh, it's from uh, synchronous digital hierarchy, okay, so this is SD, SDH is synchronous digital hierarchy. This is the format, the protocol for the fiber optics. Um, and then you have ATM layer and then you have ATM adaptation layer. Now in the physical layer, uh, the transmission of the ATM cells, you can use cell based physical layer, which means that you don't put any frame in, okay? You send cell by cell, so there is no flag. You send continuous stream of 53 octets cells, okay? So you have hence cell next to each other. Synchronization is done by using HEC, the header error control, okay? Because if, in this case, you send cell next to each other like this, okay? In the header, it have the, in here it have head, header error control, right? So when you do the synchronization, okay, what you do is that you check whether this is correct or not, okay, based on the header error control, if this is correct, 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 okay? So you think that this is in sync? In synchronize, in sync, or in, sync, in synchronization. Even though some of them is wrong, it's still okay if most of them are, are correct. Okay, correct still. But if you see something like wrong, 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 wrong. Okay, this is problem. You have to uh, guess. Okay, you can guess that there is problem with synchronization. Because if it's all wrong, if you do something like this, if the header is, is done at the wrong place, if you think that the start here, and you think that this is the header error control, the fourth, the fifth byte of header, and you think that it's, the synchronization is wrong, so you think that the cell start here, you think the cell start here, but it's actually start at the red, at the red position, okay? But you think that it start at the blue position. So you get the HEC, you think that this is the HEC, you think that this is the HEC, because you count that at the beginning, beginning, you think that this is beginning of, of, of sale, which is wrong. This is the wrong beginning of sale, okay? So you think that is, this is uh, the beginning of sale, then you count to the fifth byte, and you think this is HEC. When you make the error detection, since this is not the HEC, it's just a random sequence of bits, okay? You find that it doesn't check. So if it's wrong, 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 then you think that you know that there's a problem with synchronization, okay? And then you can chip until you find if it's as you see, it's right, 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 okay? For a long time, then it's uh, in synchronization. The second uh, physical layer is you can use SDH-based. Uh, physical layer, as I say, SDH is synchronous digital hierarchy, and it's a standard for optical transmission interface that use fiber optics, okay? You can, in this case, you can transmit ATM cells by putting them in the frame structure of the SDH standard. So SDH standard is, has a frame that is um, big, a big frame, okay? So you put a lot of cells in this frame format. Since um, we have not talked about the SDH, uh, so we talked about ATM, we focus on ATM, so we just show you that you can put a lot of cells in here, 
because it has um, 260 uh, bytes, okay, and you put like 53 by 53 by 53 by for a sale. So you put many sales on one line, and you have many lines here. This is a STM1 payload, okay, for SDS based ATM sale transmission. STM1 is a synchronous transfer mode, level one. Okay. So you have um, similar to if you compare to you have a level one of like DS1 something like that. So you have uh, this is a basic, basic format, okay, and uh, ATM sales, okay. You put into the payload or the information field of this frame, and the start of the frame may be offset, okay, from the beginning of the payload part. Uh, this is the feature of the uh, STM1, okay, that you can. You you have a pointer to to tell to tell, to tell which bit is the, or which byte is the start of the ATM sales. Okay, so this is features of STM1 frame. So you can see that the J1, B3, C2, these are the headers, and some of this is a, a pointer to indicate the beginning of the, of the sales that are inside of the payload. Now let's talk about the ATM layer. In this case, uh, the ATM layer is common to all service. So for different um, different kind of data, different type of data, you still have the same um, the same format of the ATM layer. So you define the transmission data in the fixed size fields in, in this layer, and you also define the use of the logical connections, the logic channel number, or the virtual circuit connection, virtual part connection, something like that. So at this layer, you treat all type of traffic the same. But what is, uh, if the traffic are different, okay, coming in, you will, you will uh, convert, okay, them at the ATM adaptation layer. So you will map some higher layer information that may not based on the ATM protocol into ATM sales, okay, so that you can transport through the ATM network. Ah, this is the main topic, okay, the ATM series uh, categories, okay. Uh, this is uh, what I talked about, the quality of service. Okay. Now, uh, in ATM network, okay, you have, since you transfer many kind of network, okay, such as real-time voice, video, or burst data traffic okay, at the same time, with, um, combine them, okay, mix them together. Okay, you can send one cell is data, one cell is voice, and one cell is video, or something like that. So you have to define, uh, you have uh, to define the, quality of service, okay? And there are about five main, uh, the five service categories. The first one, the first main group is the real-time service. This one have a issue on the delay, okay? Delay have to be fixed or uh, and small, okay? Or relatively fixed, okay? And it have to be small delay. Uh, the first one is constant bit rate or BER uh, service. The second one is the real-time variable bit rate of Real time VBR. Okay. Um, the second set, the second set is a non real time service. You have the non real time variable bit rate, or NRT VBR, and they have a uh, variable bit rate or ABR and the unspecified bit rate or UBR. Now let's look at the constant bit rate. Uh, this is real time service with small delay and send constant uh, data rate. Okay. You can guess this is for telephone. Okay. Digital voice. Uh, application, so you will, um, so you you want to send a constant rate during the connection lifetime. Okay, you want small delay, relatively fixed delay. So telephone, digital voice, digital digitized voice, uh, traffic, um, also video conference, and television, the pay per view um, or the video on demand. Okay, that you pay to watch the video. You want the delay to for each frame, okay, to come, have a kind of a fixed delay so that you can watch the video continuously. Uh, this one makes it possible to transmit real-time voice audio and video traffic, okay, over the ATM network and by having this service category. The second one is a real-time variable bit rate, okay. This one is used for same-time sensitive application. You have a tight delay constraint, but it doesn't, maybe not fixed as the, relatively fixed as the, the first one is a little bit more flexible, okay? 
the difference between the real-time variable bit rate and the constant bit rate, BC, CBR, is that the source is somewhat bursty in the real-time variable bit rate. For example, uh, the video compression, okay? So when you send, if, if in some, at some time you can compress a lot, so you have a lot of uh, few bits to transmit. If at some time you can compress little, then you have more bits to transmit, okay? But you want to arrive at the destination so that the user at the end can watch it as a continuous video. So uh, video compression use uh, the real-time variable bit rate because the data rate that is sent through the network is variable, not fixed, fixed rate, okay? But have to be displayed real-time at the destination. Um, this one, okay, the network can statistically multiplex many real-time variable bit rate source together. So if you have many people watching video and you compress the video for them, okay, you can combine and use statistically if you combine 100 videos together, maybe you can use the, um, the resource of maybe like 70 or 80 um, percent of the, of the full um, bandwidth that you require, okay, because uh, when, when the first one uh, complex a lot, maybe the second one complex a little or something like that. So this is more flexible than, than the constant bit rate, okay? This, the third one is non-real-time variable bit rate or NRT VBR. In this case, if you can, um, okay, in, in this case, if you, if you want the network, okay, to provide uh, a better um, quality of service in terms of, of loss and delay, okay? So the, in these uh, categories of service, the end system can specify peak sale time, uh, fixed peak sale rate, okay? So this is the highest sale rate that you get and how bursty the sales may be. So if you tell, uh, if you tell the network, okay, the, how the traffic behave, okay, what is the characterize of the, of the, of the traffic that will be transmitting, then, then the network can service uh, better, okay? So for example, if you have an airline reservation or bank transaction, okay, so this is kind of um, when the, it's not real time, but the data transfer have a critical response time requirement. So short time requirement, but not really real time, okay? So uh, the last one is available bit rate or ABR. This is for bursty traffic, okay? So basically, it's a uh, data traffic. Uh, in this case, the network will guarantee to set a minimum sale rate, okay, MCR. So if you think of like when you're connecting, for example, in, in another kind of network, uh, when you buy internet packet, okay, then they may guarantee, okay, for this packet, guarantee minimum uh, data rate of um, five megabit per sec, something like that, but the if no one is using, if it's free, then you can get up to 20 megabit per sec, okay, for this packet, okay? So it has like the minimum rate and the maximum rate. So similarly in the ATM, they have the minimum sale rate and the peak sale rate, okay? If uh, the, the network is free, you, the user can get the peak sale rate. This is, this um, will share the available capacity, okay? Fairly, uh, fairly with our ABR source. So if you have 20 users coming in, um, paying for the service of the available bit rate, okay? If you have a lot of uh, bandwidth left, okay, you can, uh, you can give them, for example, um, you can give them the same, the same data rate. If you increase the data rate, you have to increase for all of the users in the ABR categories. If there is um, um, congestion, okay, all of them will get, all of them will get uh, lower. Uh, data rate, which is the same for all ABR users, so it's fair in that case. Um, now the available bit rate, uh, sorry, uh, available capacity come from what? Come from the fact that CBR and VBR is not used the network, all of the network resource, okay? So some of them you, you, you assign for C, CBR, some you assign for VBR, and you still have some left, okay? And also the VBR are bursty. So sometimes you send data, sometimes it's, um, you send less data, so the commit, committed capacity that you assign for the VBR sometimes is not used all, okay? So all of them are not used. So there are some left. 
And this is the only type of service that networks send feedback to the source to slow down the traffic, okay? So they have flow control. Tell the source, please slow down the traffic so that the capacity is fairly allocated, okay? So that um, if you have the capacity this much left and you have to share for 20 users, you have only this flow that you can transmit, okay? This flow rate. Application is the LAN interconnection, local area network. The last one is unspecified bit rate, okay, or UBR. It's unspecified because it doesn't give any guarantee to your user, but it uses a base effort service. Base effort service means that they will try as best as they can, okay, to transmit your data, but there is no guarantee on the minimum data rate that you will get, okay. So, since the network made no commitment, okay, it will send no feedback to the to the uh, UBR source, even though uh, the network may be congested, it accepts all UBR uh, users, okay? But if the, if the capacity is used up, okay, then for already by some uh, UBR users, then the others come in cannot transmit. Uh, it may get lost, but um, the user will not get the feedback uh, from the network. However, if you think about if you load an internet page, web page, okay, and if you wait for maybe two or three minutes and it doesn't show up, so you know maybe something is wrong in the network, right? So the user will retransmit or request the information by themselves, okay? But the network will not tell user that, oh, okay, uh, that, okay, it's, it's got lost, something like that, okay? So in this, ATM is similar. Um, for all um, UBR sales, okay? All, all UBR users, okay, can transmit. Uh, so the network accept all of them, okay? But they will send out first in first out basis, FIFR, FIFO, okay? So if there is only capacity left from other service, um, they will send uh, UBR. This one is the cheapest of the service, right? So it will charge the users list, uh, list okay? But constant bit rate is um, expensive because you have to fix the capacity for for the pair of users, okay? So the user have to pay more to use the, the bandwidth. And if there is congest congestion in the network, okay, you will be, say so will be discarded first, okay, and also not tell the source. Uh, so is this for application that can accept variable delay and show loss, for example, the TCP based traffic, okay, that you transmit through the internet. TCP is a, is a TCP IP protocol, okay, that's used in the internet. So you send text data, image, video, okay, over the internet. You have to allow for um, base effort service, okay. Now look at this picture, okay. If the 100% of the line capacity, fix, the fixed uh, percentage will be given for constant bit rate, okay. And uh, a lot of the, of them, of the, of the rest will be given to variable bit rate. You can see the variable bit rate, some of them use, sometimes it use a lot of capacity, sometimes it use less capacity. And you have to have a, the rest from variable bit rate to be a variable bit rate and unspecified bit rate, okay? Uh, both of them have to use, have, have to have some capacity left because a variable bit rate you have to guarantee for the minimum, for the minimum uh, data rate, okay, for the user, but unspecified Whatever is left, okay, then you, you can send. Ah, the last, the last topic is the ATM adaptation layer, AAL in the protocol. You have a lowest layer, physical layer, then ATM layer, then the next layer, ATM adaptation layer is divided into two sub-layers, the segmentation and reassembly or SAR sub-layer and the convergence sub-layer or CS. And then the higher layer is AL user. In the layer of the AL user, if you have the user data on the right, then uh, in the convergence sublayer, you convergence sublayer, we add the header and the tailor. So in the front and in the back of the user data, and we call this um, convergence sublayer protocol data unit. Okay, PDU is PDU is protocol data unit. Okay, so this is a uh, Convergence sublayer protocol data unit. Okay, then 
you divide this into the go down to the segmentation and reassembly sub layer so you, you divide it into smaller size so segmentation protocol data unit okay so you add also a header and tailor okay this going to be the payload for the ATM sale so you have a uh, many you know PDU at the uh, SAR layer and then you put into the payload of the ATM cell and then you put the header um, for the to the of the ATM okay the five by header to make it an ATM cell at the ATM layers so the AL again it map higher layers information okay that may not be based on the ATM protocol into the ATM cells for example the input may be the pulse code modulation voice or it uh, can be the internet protocol um, data. Okay. So, for example, the BPCM provides bit stream of voice, okay, and we need to group these bits, the voice samples into the ATM cell, okay, so that we, they can send through um, over the ATM uh, network. And the IP packet, okay, we need to segment it because it's bigger than the ATM cell. You have to segment it. You have to divide it into small small packet okay uh, put it into the ATM sales this allow the use of we call it IP over ATM okay so we can connect the IP base uh, network to the ATM network okay and at the destination the AAL ATM adaptation layer we put this higher information back into the appropriate format okay so it, it will reverse the order into the user data again okay so this is the end of the wide array network Okay, and um, we will talk about the next one is routing, okay, in the next chapter. Thank you.